Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Here to go over the Discipline Priest redesign updates, big changes that they've been making because there's a lot of it and there is a lot to how some of the gameplay is changing around at the moment. So first and foremost, let's start it off with their goals, their goals and intentions for what they want to be able to get done with this. They want to simplify Disc's damage rotation as well as the number of stacking modifiers used when ramping for burst healing. Notably, these are things like Shadow Covenant, Schism, Harsh Discipline, where you have to be casting specific abilities before you get the value out of the total of your damage. For you can totally do all your damage, you have to make sure you Harsh Discipline in advance, Schism, Shadow Covenant, all of that, and then you actually do healing. So their goal is to make it smoother to play by reducing the number of abilities pressed in sequence, again, to set up your damage, to be able to do damage, allowing players to focus on managing atonement and triaging their allies instead. This also means that they want to make sure single target is actually worth a damn. So keep that in mind as these changes happen. Schism, been redesigned, and now it causes Mind Blast to fracture the enemy's mind, increasing your spell damage to the target by 10%. This means that with Mind Blast now effectively being a 24 second cooldown, it's literally just Schism redesigned. The abilities have gotten melded together, and that's going to be how that ability works. Shadow Covenant has been redesigned as well to be passive based off using Shadow Fiend or Mindbender, Transforming Halo Divine Star and Penance, as usual, into the Shadow Spells, and increasing the damage and healing of your Shadow Spells by 25% for 15 seconds. Uh, and then another, and it's only 7 seconds though, when it comes to Mindbender. The biggest thing that I see here is that, I believe this is before you are going to be having the increased uptime that you have from Embrace Shadow. And so, when it comes to that, you would be having only 7 seconds of uptime when you have Mindbender up for Shadow Covenant, but then you'd be able to extend it to the 15 seconds if you change those talents around. So you could have up to 15 seconds with Mind Vendor, and then you could have whatever it is, like the 22 seconds or so when it, the 23 seconds when you have it up with Shadow Fiend. This is kind of cool, but the problem is that Shadow Fiend is just a three minute cooldown that you're having as a result. And there's not really any talent to be able to reduce Shadow Fiend's cooldown to be a bit more competitive when it comes to comparing it to Squid. So that's kind of one of the problems that sort of stands out at the moment is making sure that like Shadow Fiend and Mindbender could actually both be equally competitive at the moment. Like we mentioned, Mind Blast is a 24 second cooldown and its damage has been increased by 30%. Dark Indulgence, which used to give a charge of Mind Blast, instead gives you a 100% chance to grant power of the dark side, which means when you cast that Mind Blast, you inflict greater damage for the next couple seconds, just like you would with the Schism, and your Penance is also going to hit harder as a result. So all of these ways that you could sort of stack up and yield massive damage all at the same time flow together in unison. Inescapable Torment's damage has been increased, likely to account for having less Mind Blast to be able to cast, but it also triggers from Penance, Mind Blast, and Shadow Word Death which means that you're not having as many Mind Blasts to cast, but you have another ability that's going to help you cast it. And since Inescapable Torment's damage is increased by 60%, that also means some of the Atonement, since it only yields Atonement off one enemy hit, is also going to be increased quite a bit as well. Solace has been removed, so again, lots and lots of damage abilities being pruned. Solace not being that powerful, just being another button that had to be weaved in, having to just compete and figure out if it's going to be more worth to do solace and all the button bloat versus having shield discipline it's just gone it's just simplified it's great harsh discipline also been changed it no longer triggers after four spell casts and instead it's going to trigger off of your radiances so when you have both points it'll be a 60 percent chance to cause your next penance to be free and fire three extra volts and so like they said, yeah, Harsh Discipline was really fun, but it's another thing you have to prep. It's another thing you have to do before you can actually set up your output. This usually was not a problem for Mythic Plus players, and if you're like a Mythic Plus main, uh, seeing this change, you may not like it that much, but it is a really big boon for raiding, where sometimes you would hold on to a proc and feel like you're just locked into it all the time before you'd be able to actually spend it on your ramp because you didn't want to waste it and then have to build up another one before you could heal. Sanctuary is an early tier talent. It's in the uh, the first tier, the first eight that you're going to be selecting. And you can see it right here. It's going to be preventing the next 80% of the damage dealt. It's like 80% of the damage dealt, I think, by Smite. So if Smite's dealing like 10k or something like that, it's like 9-ish. 
and this preventive thing is sort of like absorbing damage. So you cast Smite, it debuffs the enemy. When the enemy deals damage, part of that is absorbed because of Sanctuary. You can stack that about five times, so it usually ends up being up to like 40 or 50k damage if you're just smite spamming. And keep in mind that this is going to be a trend going forward for these changes, is that they are going to be making smite more valuable to actually utilize. Okay, so keep that in mind. Ultimate Penitence. Let me uh, actually go over to the target dummy so you can actually see what this ability is and how it works. This is a four minute cooldown and it replaces Light's Wrath, so you really hope that it's going to be strong. And if you cast it right here, it is unleashing a hail of penance bolts onto enemies and dealing massive amounts of damage. Also, when you're in the air, you are in gaining a shield for half your health and you are unaffected by knockbacks or crowd control effects. So you are able to just rain holy hellfire onto your enemies by dealing damage. Interestingly enough, when it came to the breakdown of this ability, there was some between healing and there was some between dealing damage. And the big thing there is just being able to properly control if you wanted to use it for damage would probably be the biggest thing they sort of need to be able to figure out there. There's a couple supporting talents. Again, this is in the Light's Wrath row. It basically replaces Light's Wrath. The supporting talent below it, Heaven's Wrath. Each Penance Bolt you fire reduces the cooldown of Ultimate Penitence. Unfortunately, this does not include the Penance Bolts that you're firing while Ultimate Penitence is up. We did some testing, and of course, Ultimate Penitence is a four minute cooldown, and being able to just smite and hit Penance and everything like that, we were able to get our cooldown to about like two and a half minutes or so by hitting Penance. So it's like a minute and a half or so of cooldown reduction that you could get on a pretty decently consistent basis that you'd have. The final tier is overloaded with light. This is your capstone. It emits an explosion of light, healing 10 allies around you, and applying atonement at half of normal duration. So like a seven and a half second uptime for your atonement while you fly into the air and start shooting off penance damage for five or six seconds. So you're able to apply all these atonements and get a whole bunch of value for just barraging your enemies with lots of penance bolts all at the same time, which makes it insanely, insanely useful uh, if you need to be able to put together a mass burst of healing, have your party-wide oh shit button whenever you need it. Ultimate Penitence, well, every two and a half minutes or three minutes will be there. <laughs> penance damage, of course, is baseline increased by 15% with its healing by 30%. Barrier has been nerfed, and so now it's going to be reducing 20% of all damage taken. Atonement gets nerfed, which was a little scary moment, having it only heal for 32% of damage done. But at long last, they're increasing atonement healing by 50% when not in a raid. Allowing them to hopefully, possibly, probably split the healing and have independent variables to tune around when healing for raids and for Mythic Plus. Something everybody has been dying for for a very long time. Flash heal healing has been increased by 40%, meaning your spot healing is going to be better. So you can actually flash heal your allies and expect the health bars to go up, which would be absolutely fantastic. Powered shield absorbs increased a little bit. Divine Aegis is now a one-pointer, and of course, like I mentioned, Light's Wrath and all the goodies assigned to it have been removed. So this is the current talent setup that you have going on so far. Some of the losers, I think, of the current setup are things like Twilight Equilibrium and Expiation. And now it feels like Expiation is a lot of points to invest in when you have other one-pointers like Divine Aegis, you have the one-pointers all the way down for your Mindbender setup since Inescapable Torment is now a one-pointer as well. And it seems like there's going to be a lot more competition for your final tier of talents. And you also are not having as many Mind Blasts to cast, which means you're getting less Expiation value. And it's already sort of being tied into the new Schism that you have going forward. So it seems like it'd be a little bit harder to use Expiation to get really good value. And Twilight Equilibrium is a little bit harder to be able to weave when you just have less Shadow Spells on hand. Using Shadow or Death on a 10 second cooldown is pretty good if you were already committed down the path of running Expiation, but you also are going to have a lot of point investiture into Ultimate Penitence if you ran it, which could be maybe a little bit too much for a dungeon environment. I think it could be really, really powerful for a raiding environment, so it kind of just depends on how it's going to be used. We'll have to be able to see so far. Now, that also is going to bring us to our tier sets, where Smite and Penance damage is increased by 20%, which is, again, part of the theme. They want Smite to feel useful, 
And they want Penance, of course, to feel strong as well. And keep in mind, Smite is extending the duration of an active one, singular, uh, an active atonement by two seconds. This eh, seems like okay when it comes to a raiding environment, since, of course, you're going to be ramping anyway. You might just be able to extend some tank atonement, but you might be refreshing it anyway. You know, there, there are some of those that come into it for a raiding. But having just baseline Smite and Penance damage being increased, really, really nice. Smite has a 100% chance, though, to cast an additional time during Shadow Covenant, also dealing Shadow Damage. And so, assuming it works properly, you'd be casting two Smites during your Shadow Covenant windows, which is offering even more Atonement extension uh, for your party or for your raid, whenever you have it. This could be absolutely gigantic when it's going to come to improving your Mythic Plus quality. And while a lot of people have worried heavily about losing our current tier set, especially those who run Mythic Plus a lot, because I think it's more impactful for Mythic Plus, getting the longer lasting radiances and having them be instant cast. Let me tell you this. When we were in season one of Dragonflight, you had the damage setup of like Schism, Shadow Covenant, all the damage abilities. It took really long times to be able to set that up and the lengthy cast of radiance that you had to deal with. And so it was just this massive double-edged sword where it felt like it was a nightmare to be able to heal. Season 2, we get our instant cast Radiances, and they also did a lot to increase the healing value of Radiance. And as a result, we were able to sort of bounce back quickly, but our damage side, side still needed a lot of setup that you had, to the point where you're holding on to like Shadow Covenant or Schism or whatever, just to be able to uh, reverse incoming damage. And it felt very swingy where you're taking 3 or 4 seconds still because of the lengthy damage setup to be able to actually heal people. Now, you are going to be losing the instant cast radiances, it's true, but in exchange for that, you don't have to be setting up your Shadow Covenant or your Schism or all this lengthy damage or have to worry about when you're using your Harsh Discipline if there's like a really bursty fight like Forge Master Go Wreck or anything. You are just able to net out that burst healing a lot faster and it will absolutely require you to be a little bit more mindful of when you're applying atonements and how you're doing it, where you're positioning, because you won't have the instant cast value. But on the other side, Rapture becomes a bit better of a cooldown when they're having the baseline shield increase. And of course, you're gonna be able to have the possibility of like an oh shit button with something like Ultimate Penitence, which could offer quite a bit more protection that you have so far. So I've been playing around with some of the talents. These are far from complete or anything like that. We still have raid testing, mythic plus testing, all kinds of things. But I do think for something like a dungeon environment, I probably would try to stray away from ultimate penitence and see if I could be playing with something like Blaze of Light, maybe Train of Thought, Aegis, to be able to net out lots of penances, lots of smites, so that when I have my Mindbender up, I'm activating Shadow Covenant, I'm getting my Dark and Light smites, and I'm getting my Dark Penance to be able to add into it. It might be a little bit tough to figure out where I could fit Sanctuary into this talent build, so I could also take advantage of that beneficial Absorb effect that Sanctuary has, but having actual good competitive options is kind of a good problem. I think probably the biggest problems that Disc is facing at the moment is making sure that there's sort of a balance between competition for your abilities. Having something like Overloaded with Light, allowing you to instantly apply Atonements, have an oh shit button, and rain holy hellfire onto your allies just feels, and enemies, feels really good. Uh, but things like Wheel and Woe, Aegis, Twilight Equilibrium also feel like they're kind of missing out. And that's a little bit frustrating uh, to be able to see as well. So that's probably one of the biggest things that I'd be looking at going forward is how do you actually start balancing out some of the competition when it comes to these talent trees and setups. And so that's probably, probably the very likely the biggest frustration that I have at the moment or what I would be like worried about seeing. Uh, overall, very excited for some of what's coming with this. I think a lot of the problems that they have are kind of well within their control and this is gonna be far from the end. It's gonna feel really weird for Mythic Plus mains not casting Mind Blast all the time and I really hope people just kind of give it a chance to see what it's like when you're actually gonna be able to be casting large amounts of Smite, playing around some of the tier set and be able to benefit actually from abilities like Words of the Pious, which has been <laughs> kind of relegated throughout the expansion because Smite's been so bad. Now you're having Smite getting stronger, Holy Nova getting stronger, and more than ever before, your ability to heal from just dealing damage and not having to cast all these random-ass modifier spells and you can just deal damage and heal people is right, 
right there. And I think it's well worth the cost of having to go back to casting Radiance once again. Might be a little bit bad at first, but I think the damage side is well worth it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. When we have Mythic Plus and Raid testing, we're gonna be trying out a whole variety of builds. So again, don't stress over just like what you see on your screen. We're just gonna try out a whole bunch of stuff. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're enjoying the content. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch y'all next time.